And my uh, dad's name was Robert Bellinger Conlon. Uh, my dad uh, fought in World War II. Uh, he was a captain in the United States Army. He was killed in Italy, uh, May 21st, 1944. Even though I never knew him, what I've read about him and what the men said about him it just inspired me for my whole life, all, all my life. I'm 72 years old, and his example has been with me all those years. He didn't have to enlist, but he did it anyway. And uh, as a man who loved his country, loved his God, loved his wife, just um, a fine example. My dad was uh, captain of the 93rd uh, Armored Field Artillery Battalion, and he was a leader amongst leaders. They, they, they were always in the front lines. There was nothing from behind. He was always out in the front, his battery. He served across Africa, then he went to Sicily, then from Sicily to Italy, and uh, Italy was where he was killed. There was this bridge that went over a railroad trestle and it was vital for the advancement of all the troops. And my dad was out in front, uh, scouting out the uh, terrain and what was going on. And when he was there, he saw the Germans getting ready to blow up the bridge. So he told the second he was with other men, he told the other men to go back and get help. And he and his lieutenant jumped on a Jeep that had a machine gun on the back of the Jeep. And my dad got up on the machine gun, saw the Germans on the bridge, uh, ready to blow. He killed the Germans on the bridge, uh, drove the Jeep out in full view of the other Germans that were on the other side of the bridge, and got off the Jeep and cut the wires to the explosive charges. And then, unbeknownst to him, there was a hidden machine gun nest that he did not see. Uh, and they opened fire and it killed my dad and the man that was with him and another Italian uh, that were with him on the bridge. Well, I can only go by what his commanding officer said in one of the letters that I received that my dad's action and scattering the troops and having for reinforcements uh, saved the lives of about a thousand men. That's one of the reasons that he was granted that Distinguished Service Cross because not only saved the bridge but the lives of his fellow soldiers in the process. He always was a leader. He never expected anybody to do anything that he was not willing to do or did do himself. And so that way his men were very eager to follow him and his example was exemplary. And one of his um, commanding officers, uh, the colonel, said that he was a gallant and honest man and a man highly respected and loved by his men. Realizing that any day he could die didn't matter. He was going to live every day with the idea that um, we're one day closer to freedom and to winning this war. He's buried in uh, Nutino, the Amer American Military Cemetery. It's about 100 miles north of where he was actually killed, the cemetery. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful tribute to those men and women who sacrificed. To visit the place um, where he was killed in the area, it was very important to me because of never having known him or anything, here was an opportunity for me to be near his bones, so to speak, and to just uh, stand in front of the cross and cry and uh, put my hand on the cross and uh, then stand up and come to attention and salute him and tell him I miss him. Basically, it's a once in a lifetime or maybe twice in a lifetime opportunity to actually visit where he was buried. And uh, so uh, it was a, an experience that I'll treasure. And if the ocean, um, doesn't make him any farther from my heart than if he were here in the United States.
Uh, we need to pay respect to those that have gone on because it makes us think and realize that what we have came at a price. It was free to us, but not to those men and women who made it possible for us to live in such a great country as America.